I have one cup of coffee, so maybe I can get this done before this gets cold. wanted to take a few minutes and talk to you about um, chronic conditions and mental health. It's raining outside. I'm in one of my favorite spaces in my home and I thought this would be the perfect time to spend a few minutes talking about um, chronic conditions and mental health. Last time we were together I shared a few things about myself and my best hopes of what we're doing here. I mentioned I have EDS. I'm a licensed professional counselor but I'm not here to counsel you via video. I'm not a doctor, I'm not a scientist. Anything I explain is my own personal either beliefs or um, experiences. I wanna to speak to you all a little bit about mental health. Living with a chronic condition, mostly invisible. Um, and I use the term invisible relatively loosely because you may have an invisible illness, but some attributes are noticeable enough that it draws undesirable looks, maybe even comments. This is so helpful in the process. It so helps us go out into public. So that we're all on the same page as far as um, letting me identify a few elements that are contributors to this fight. Here's a short list of contributing factors that cause or provoke mental health issues. Oh, and special side note, Please know this is not an exhaustive list. If I attempted that we would be here for hours exploring all factors that contribute to mental health issues from chronic conditions. So this is just a few. Mental health risk factors would be family, stressful life situations, chronic illness, traumatic experience, illegal drug use, childhood abuse and neglect, lack of social supports. Uh, again, it could go on and on. But here are two short lists of modifiable and non-modifiable factors that cause or contribute to um, or are due to chronic illness. Again, not exhaustive. Um, modifiable or fixable, changeable risk factors would be poor eating um, or a poor diet for whatever reason, lack of physical activity for whatever reason, substance use, environmental factors, socioeconomic status, um, there are probably some more, but non-modifiable would be age, disability, family history, things you can't change. How does our mental health affect our chronic illness and how does our chronic illness affect our mental health? I don't think one can be answered without addressing the other. Mental health is exacerbated by chronic illness and chronic illness is exacerbated by mental health challenges. So they play off of one another. As much as we need to feel and be understood by others, we must make the same effort to understand ourselves. Let me stop here. And for the last moment, let me talk about the social needs of the brain and how this may impact our mental health. One brain needs another brain. I am not going to go into detail as a quick search of the internet will provide you this evidence. Um, again, not a doctor, not a scientist. I wanna say that for a disclaimer so that I am not liable. But really, check it out. Google it. Our social needs push us to take chances and discover more about ourselves and about others. We have a drive to belong, fit in, be a part of something bigger than ourselves. This is a mark of humanity. The feeling of loneliness causes us to search for community. A lack of boundaries or feelings of desperation will potentially cause us to grab the first warm body despite whether or not that person is safe or a healthy person to allow close to us. We need our own uniqueness revealed. Maybe you haven't discovered that yet. Maybe you haven't shared it with anyone, but it's worth sharing your story, sharing your vulnerabilities. But let me encourage you to choose wisely your circle of friends, your circle of closeness, the people you allow into your um, inner life, into the areas that make you vulnerable 
Um, there's a thing called ring theory you can actually look up and gain a better understanding of where people should be appropriately placed in your life. Should they be close? Should they be um, arm's length? Should they be even further out into the um, outskirts of our relating and our connectiveness? It's important that you're able to manage that. I tell my clients that we have, say, three rings of people. This is kind of a semi-understanding of ring theory or my take on ring theory. Let me just put it that way. The inner circle is small, so it only fits maybe two or three people at the max. So those two or three people are the ones you're most vulnerable with, the most connected to. And then the next group of people would be the say five to seven people their friends or acquaintances or a mixture of both that you can count on to call on when you need somebody or that they're there when you want to have a good time but you don't necessarily share your intrinsic experience or your inner experience and you definitely don't share the things that are private or things you don't want put out there because you don't know all the time if you can trust them that would be that second circle of people Anybody outside of those two definitions would be in the furthest circle, which would be the rest of the world. I can have a good time with you without sharing my business. And it's just a way to keep yourself safe and to protect yourself. So, despite chronic illness or any battle we face, we're special and worthy of attention, likable and lovable. We each deserve respect and to be valued. This takes investment and this takes time. Without these things, we often develop feelings of deep loneliness and more intensified mental health challenges. It's easy to trust in the beauty of others when they look as we imagine they should. But when an individual has a challenge, there is a need to suspend our belief about how people should be and love people and ourselves as we are, as they are. Weakness is part of the human condition. So maybe it's not so much weakness, but differences that we all possess. This video cannot be all comprehensive, but a start to a conversation about the mental health challenges faced by those with an invisible chronic illness. Final thought, love people, love ourselves. And to love others and to love ourselves is to celebrate who we are and the wonder of that. Every person deserves to be celebrated and to know that they are a source of joy. This requires stepping out of our comfort zone. This requires trusting. This requires vulnerability. Things that we're not usually good at because doing those things may have or will prove not to be safe with some people. So we can make sure that we are safe people, whether other people do or don't. Um, that said, thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks for enjoying my space. I hope you have a wonderful day. See you next time.